ยังเกิดเสียเออเกิดเสียสารุตีนี่ดาสารุตีนี่นี่จ้ะรอจมารู้อ่ะบ่เนาะดีหุ่นซ่าเจเนเรตไบกราวน์เปียวมาบ่
ဒီကျန်းစာဘူးဖတ်တဲ့ခါမနောက်တစ်နေဘယ်လိုဖလားလဲဆိုလို့ရှိတော့သူ့အနီးဆက်ရာအနီးဆက်ရာဟိုအရ
Me dá as ideias, mas... Eu não sei do bom, eu não sei, tem uma coisa que eu não sei, eu não sei. Eu não sei, 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 eu não sei. We can identify ourselves with, with the big groups, those who follow. No? ก็แค่อาจจะตะคิงคริสต์ก็อะไรอยู่ปล่อยเนาะอะไรอยู่สู้จริงผิดเลยกล้วยเปล่าแม่สุดาอมันเดียวเลยเป็นดีเลยดู
ไอ้ฮอบเปียวเจ๋อจังมาตะกินคริตตอเลยจั่วล่ะมะซ้ายอ่ะตัวมะซ้ายอ่ะล่ะเปียวเจ๋อจังจังยี้เสียเลยอ
eagerly looking forward to this blessing, this opportunity of introducing Dr. Amy Jo Levine. No, 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 no. Yeah. All discovered she's a gifted communicator no, no. with imaginative and illuminating insights into Christian scriptures. Okay. For several weeks now, I have been eagerly looking forward to this blessing, this opportunity of introducing Dr. Amy Jo Levine. As you have all discovered, she is a gifted communicator with imaginative and illuminating insights into Christian scriptures. She's a practicing Jew, a member of an Orthodox synagogue in Nashville. She's also a professor both of Jewish studies and New Testament at Vanderbilt University. Some may think it's unusual for a person of the Jewish faith to specialize in New Testament studies. It's actually not so unusual. Okay, but uh, introduce Lobia, Professor, no? Introduce Lobia. When New Testament was study look at Amy Gilliving to a Jew, no? New Testament was study look at all of your life. In fact, when I was a student in the rabbinical seminary of Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati in the early 1960s, we rabbinical students were all required to take a course in New Testament taught by the rabbi, Dr. Samuel Sandmill, who was a leading authority on Christian scriptures in his day. And during that same period, Dr. David Flusser, a devout Orthodox okay, to an electo, you know? Christianity yeah. is rooted okay. in the chief literary work of rabbinic Judaism, which was being developed during the time of Jesus. Today, we are eager to hear Dr. Amy Jo Levine's analysis of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, which she has titled, The Provocation of the Prodigal. With great joy, I present to you Dr. Amy Jo Levine. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Good. Um, Thank you for that introduction. I am honored to be put in the, in a, the camp of people like um, Rabbi Senmel and, and Flooster. Um, just, to, just to give a, a quick follow-up on that, um, Samuel Sandmel was one of the first modern Jewish scholars to look at the question of the relationship between Jews and Jesus. His legacy continues not only through the works that he wrote, which are still being read, but his son, David, who is a very good friend of mine, is not only a rabbi in Chicago, he's also on the faculty of the Catholic Theological Union in Chicago. So that continues that interfaith concern. And David Flusser's legacy uh, from Israel to the United States and throughout the world is being carried on today primarily by evangelical Protestant students whom he trained which means that the Abrahamic initiative that you have shown at Chautauqua, and particularly in terms of Jewish-Christian relations, the idea of bringing both religions together, seeing how our origins are in common, and understanding not only what we share, but why we separate, you've picked up on a legacy that has been in place for decades. Hallelujah, Chautauqua. Isn't it nice to know that what you've been doing actually carries out to the rest of the community? Okay, yeah, to introduce Bessie, you know, to introduce Lola. And she, yeah, man, to introduce Bello, you know, so I thought, what a good, then a little line with the mother, Luke's and all the Bala Piamis, so they have, you know? Okay. Odd for lobster, we've got problems. Okay, come on. Although you could work listening well enough. In terms of other points regarding the okay, discussion. All right, what we're doing today is we're looking okay, at Diane is on, no? and Luke to put on. at lost things, lost sheep, lost coins, and lost sons. We're in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. We've already talked about how to read parables. So remember the kind of basic model. 
parables are designed to disrupt the status quo and to create slight feelings in us of challenge and of provocation and to try to get us to live life more abundantly, live in the world more fully and more compassionately and more generously. Okay, do a barbell solution. Just a quick meal solution, bro. Do a device loop, bro. Literally device loop, bro. Technician, who ma? The look sangama solution. The king create or the pumpkin loop, bro. Parable loop, or English loop. Parable so pump up my net inside. ไอ้สังหารมาบายပြောเลยตูเปี่ยวตัวได้หายกงပြောเลยเปี่ยวได้ตู้จองเปี่ยวได้บาเลปะสันปะสันเปี่ยวเลยมอสุมาปะสันไ
ကျမရောကျပိုင်လီလာပြီဆိုတော့ပြောက်သောသားအကြောင်းကောင်းစင်တွေပြီးလဲကဲအဲ့ကောင်းစင်တွေပြီးတာလဲပဲဒါမစ
he was the one who was lost and is now found, mm -hmm. right? And they identified the dad in the parable as God. And they said the message here is that God forgives the sinner even before the sinner gets out his speech of repentance. Okay. So it becomes a story of a sinner who has been forgiven and a loving father who forgives. And hence the focus goes on the prodigal because the average Christian in the church in antiquity identified with the prodigal. Moreover, the way Luke sets up this parable, Luke suggests that the older son might be like those recalcitrant Pharisees and scribes who want to close off the kingdom of heaven to anybody except for them, those narrow folks. Um, and people reading this parable could not possibly in the church identify with the older son because he got coded as the Pharisee. Um, one can take that reading. It's not a bad reading. It's just not, I think, the reading that Jesus' first followers would have come up with. Another problem we have with this parable is that most of my students, my Christian students, think the parable is about repentance and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sell either short. I think repentance and forgiveness are extremely important. And there's lots of repenting and forgiving in the Bible. I'm just not sure it's here. The word forgiveness doesn't show up. And although we're told what the younger son is thinking, we're never actually told he repents. Does he? Perhaps. I have my doubts, and I should admit right up front, I don't like this kid. So you know where I'm coming from here. It's Luke who tells us the story is about repentance. The parable in chapter 15, the parable of the two sons, is prefaced by two other parables, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin, which we might also call the parable of the anxious shepherd and the parable of the woman who sweeps her home. Okay. So the and after each of those parables, Luke tells us, quote, just so I tell you, there is more joy in heaven in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents than over 99 who are righteous. So it's Luke who tells us that the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin are about repenting. That's fine. Again, I don't want to take away from that. I'm just not sure that's what's going on. Why? Because sheep don't repent. They're too stupid. Mm. <laughs> Okay. And coins don't repent. So before we get to our parable, very briefly, we'll look at the first two parables, and then we'll look at this triptych. Okay. The parable of the lost sheep is Luke chapter 15. It's only three verses, verses 4 through 6, and it goes like this. Which of you, having a hundred sheep, let's stop there for a minute. We think about Jesus as talking to a group of peasants. Most people don't own a hundred sheep. That's a lot of sheep. Okay. Right. Talking to an upend group here. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? The answer here would be no one. Okay. 
ตู้เตียงอาชีพอ่ะโกเซโกกองอาชีพเจ็บทุกข์เลยเปล่าเลยไอ้โกเซโกกองท่าอยู่ทุกข์ตัวอาชานี่เองไอ้อาชานี่เ
This is also lead us not into temptation. We don't want God to test us. It means more work for us. Okay, then Moses is not born yet. Moses is not born yet. Do we want to be born yet? When Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, was tending Jethro's flock in the wilderness, a lamb scampered off, and Moses followed it until it approached a shelter under a rock. As the lamb reached the shelter, it came upon a pool of water and stopped to drink. When Moses caught up with it, he said, "I did not know that you ran away because you were thirsty. Now you must be tired. Can you imagine a shepherd really doing this?" Okay, now bong bian dou di ya. So Moses ah, dou zhang ni dou dou li biao wai. Di de qin shi biao le bong bian de te cha. Ha, biao wai le kang ma dou lai cha. Lai cha lo yi dui na li ma dui le yi dao na. This is Moses. So he hoisted the lamb up on his shoulder and started walking back with it. And the Holy One then said, "Because you showed such compassion in tending the flock of a mortal, as you live, you shall become the shepherd of Israel, the flock that is mine." Okay. I'm up here to. ပြောလိုက်တယ်နေရာဒီလိုမျိုးတနားကျင်တာတယ်ဒီပြောသွားတဲ့တိုးလေးကိုတော့မှာမိုးစဲ့ဟာအဲ့လိုမျိုးဘ
There was a man who had two sons. Adam had two sons. Adam alat tahne yaushi ye. We Adam at tahne yaushi ye. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. And every Jew knows go with Abel. Okay. Now Abel will go home. Abel, pia ekongji kan. Okay. Abel doesn't do much because he's dead for most of the story. But at least he was the one who had his sacrifice accepted, and Cain is the one who, in effect, becomes an alien and an exile. So everybody knows, go with Abel. Abraham has two sons. Ara bi arama ara ne iwa daniyaoshi Abraham ale daniyaoshi isa ne Ishmael okay daniyaoshi bi oin Abraham ale daniyaoshi. It's Ishmael and Isaac, and everybody knows, go with the younger son. Because Ishmael is predicted to be a wild ass of a man whose hand will be against his neighbor, he's the one who is banished from Abraham's community along with his mother Hagar, and it's Isaac who inherits the promise. The plot is already in place. Jacob has, excuse me, Isaac has two sons, Jacob and Esau, twins. Go with Jacob, the younger, because Esau, kind of like Uncle Ishmael, is a man of the field. Who barters away his birthright for a mess of pottage, and his blessing when、uh, Jacob steals it from him? And everybody knows, go with the younger son. And in case that hadn't been clear to us, Joseph has two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And when it comes time for grandfather Jacob to bless the grandchildren, Joseph sets out the kids so that Ephraim, the younger son, is by Jacob's left hand. And Manasseh, the older son, is by Jacob's right hand, and when he blesses them, Jacob reverses his hands.、Okay. Everybody knows, go with the younger son. However, it's a parable. Parables never go the way you want. All right. So we start. There was a father who had two sons, and we begin with the younger son. Surprisingly enough, and the younger son says, "Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me." This is rude, and in the first century, it's really rude. It's okay. Can I leave now? Should I let you listen to what she and Nelly? So, what my A B D U Lee? Who do you mean? The team she was she. So, what B B me? B B B or not? How do you? To interpretation of the Harry, no, they say without a comma. Okay, what do you want to say? To show you the blue, so what blue to interpretation was so what is the Jewish view? Not to be quite wrong. Ah, the other one, to to show you the blue view, the blue view is wrong. So, just now, not to put two out, must be a change of machine, you know. So now, so what do I have to say? So, you do your interpretation here. How do you do? Blue to mauve, so yeah. How do you do? Now, mauve is wrong. How do you do? Now that the other one, you find the yellow yellow. Now, originally solution is to what the pain is in general to. Now, so much the Bible says, "Lo shi, the lo holiness reconciliation is our most holy thing. Reconciliation is the thing that we have. We don't do it, but we do it. 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 So, just now, I have two women. Some of you are not saying, "Not how you are." Oh no! So, I have two women. Who are each one of them? Who are they? 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 ไล่ดูยาเลยไอ้พวกอีเมลอาจารย์เราเคยได้มั้งวะอ๋อโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเค